Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a standard deck called Lifebringer, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a black-white life gain deck trying to combo Hushbringer with the 5-mana Clagbridge Troll. So the way the combo works is pretty simple. Hushbringer, a 2-mana 1-2 flying lifelink saying creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. Already just a reasonable card in the deck since we have a lot of life gain synergies. So the 1-2 flying lifelink body is still totally serviceable in the deck but then the big combo here is with a troll which normally has a pretty big drawback when it enters the battlefield we have a five mana 8-8 with trample and haste which is uh, pretty strong but it does have the drawback of when it enters the battlefield target opponent creates three o one white goat creature tokens and they can feed those tokens to our troll because at the beginning of combat on our turn any opponent may sacrifice a creature if a player does tap the troll we gain three and draw a card of course gaining three and drawing a card is nice but more often than not we would rather just be attacking with our troll so by playing the troll with hushbringer in play the opponent doesn't get any goats and we're left with a five mana eight eight trample haste they can of course still sacrifice other creatures to the troll but uh, usually we're pretty happy if they're sacrificing real creatures to the troll and then looking at the rest of the deck it's your typical black white life gain synergy deck with both a Johnny sprite mate a two mana two two that's whenever we gain life it gets a plus one plus one counter and the bloodthirsty aerialist a three mana two three with the same ability but it also has flying so let's take a look at the entire deck at one mana we also have the full play set of healer's hawk another easy way for us to trigger those various life gain synergies as we get a one mana one one flying a lifelink we also have some cheap removal with disfigure giving target creature minus two minus two until end of turn maybe take out an early gilded goose from the opponent then at two mana we've got our pride mate and our hushbringer the full playset of Bloodthirsty Aerialist, and then also the full playset of Murderous Rider, which is excellent in this deck, since not only do we get a nice removal spell, Swift End, destroying target creature or planeswalker, but we also get a 3 mana 2 3 lifelink, which synergizes quite well in the deck. Also, small side note if the Murderous Rider dies with Hushbringer in play, it doesn't get uh, put on the bottom of our library, but it does go to the graveyard, which can be relevant if we want to reanimate the Murderous Rider from the graveyard with Soren, so that's just a small interaction to keep track of. And then we also have two copies of Oath of Kaya, which has a ton of great synergies in this deck, as it deals three damage to any targets and gains three life when it enters the battlefield. And whenever an opponent tries to attack one of our planeswalkers, they're also dealt two damage and we gain two. And we do have six four mana planeswalkers in the deck. Four copies of Ajani's Strength of the Pride, which can gain life with the plus one ability, make an Ajani Sprite Mate token with the minus two ability. And if we ever get to 35 or more life, we can also use a zero ability as a one sided board wipe. And then also two copies of Surin Vengeful Bloodlord, which gives all our creatures and planeswalkers a lifelink as long as it's our turn, which means that if we use a plus two ability, dealing one damage to target player or planeswalker, we also gain one life, which helps us trigger our various pride mates and aerialists. And then the minus X ability can return target creature with convert mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. And that creature also becomes a vampire, so it can help us get back the aerialist, the pride mate, or maybe even a troll if we've added some loyalty to Surin first. Then of course we've got our four trolls, which besides just being 8-8 trample haste, can also potentially enable some of the life gain synergies if the opponent does decide to sacrifice some creatures. And last but not least, another combo with the troll is Ethereal Absolution, 6 mana enchantment giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1 and opposing creatures minus 1 minus 1. So if we play the troll with Absolution in play, the goats will die on the spot and they won't have anything to sacrifice to the troll as easily. And we also get a nice mana sync ability for 4 mana we can exile an opposing creature to generate a 1-1 one, one, white and black spirit token which of course also gets plus 1 plus 1. So especially useful against the various uh, sacrifice decks that rely on the Cauldron's Familiar to return from the graveyard. And looking at our mana base we're playing 25 lands total since our curve is relatively high. We've got 7 planes, 8 swamps, 4 godless shrines, 4 scar barons which also gain 1 life which has great synergy with the rest of our deck and temple of silence to round out the mana base letting us cry one maybe assembling the various synergies more easily so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw this hand would be keepable if we had black mana but we don't this is a bit better and I'll probably bottom the Disfigure, since we have Oath to go with the Ajani, which is quite good. 
And hopefully Oath and Rider are enough interaction. Facing Temple of Malady, second Oath. And a Falmar Knight, so... Looks like a Black Green Adventure deck. Have a lot of 3 mana plays here, so our curve is a little bit clunky. But at least we have some nice uh, powerful cards. Drill Bits is gonna have a look. Assuming it takes one of the non Oath of Kaya cards here. But which one? I'm not sure of. Takes Aerialist. Alright, so... Don't really want to oath the Falmar Knights, but eventually it can also block my giant pride mate tokens, so it's probably still okay to run it out there. Disfigure their own knights so we don't gain the life from oath. Seems somewhat questionable, since this figure could still come in handy when we uh, play a Jani. And yeah, we'll just play a Jani now, make a token. And hope they don't have a questing beast, I guess. I am proud of They're missing double green for it, which they probably would have searched up with a beanstalk if they had it. Another temple. And it's just going to be a murder strider taking out a Jani. That's fine, still got our value here. So we don't have much going on. Gonna just keep up the Murder Rider. Oath can kill their rider as well and grow the Pride Mates. If we were very worried about another Disfigure, we could Oath just to get this up to a 3-3. But uh, I think we would rather wait Reaper to make me discard too. Alright, that's pretty effective. We'll keep the Murder Rider in hand. Can play the Hushbringer. I could play out a Rider just as a 2-3 if we fear that they have another Reaper, but kind of uh, need this to maybe kill their Giant or something else. They have another Giant. So one card remaining, but plenty of creatures in Adventure. It's going to be an Innkeeper, which I'll happily take out. They will get to draw a card from it before I can respond. Not much we can do there, but... Uh, we'll Swift End Innkeeper. Another Murder Sider is not bad. So we can hit for one, gain one. And play the first rider out. There's our troll, perfect. So a nice 8-8 eight eight that doesn't make any goats. Right now it's not a great attacker since they can just double block and we would trade Troll for Giant and they would gain two. So I could just decide to keep it back as a blocker while we attack with Hushbringer and grow the Pride Mate token. And then maybe next turn with the Swift End we can open up a better attack, because then if they attempt to double block and they still have a 7-7 seven seven Beanstalk, we can potentially uh, punish that play. They do have Land 8. And it's going to be another Beanstalk. And a Swordmaster to drain for one. Alright, so now... I'm probably okay trading Troll for Beanstalk. Troll also tramples, so if they single block I could still decide to murder a Rider, Swift and the Blocker to get in 8 damage if that's what we want. They could also decide to sacrifice a Rider but they are not going to. 
So these two attack. So do we want to get in a damage? Or do we want to kill the other giants? Getting in eight might actually be worth it here, since we have these two flyers that can maybe finish the job. So let's try. And of course, Reaper only flies during their turn, so it's not a flying blocker. Flanks an intruder, making some bears. That's okay. So they can easily sacrifice stuff to keep the troll tab down. No sacrifice for the troll, makes sense. Just hit for two. Points are two. We've got a nice big aerialist now. And our pride mate token is soon gonna catch up to the beanstalk. And our opponent's just gonna go out in style, shocking in an overgrown tomb. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a uh, bit of a slow hand, but uh, it's got double trolls, so the late game could be quite strong. We'll try it. Probably lead with Temple, keeping the Barons to go with Aerialists. Do I want another one? I kind of do, but we also need more lands for these trolls. So I think I'll bottom it for now. Also finding a, a life gain card to start growing the aerialists would be useful. Of course a troll can also eventually get there. So for now we'll play a timed godless shrine. Turn 3 aerialist and then turn 4 play barons to grow the aerialists. Opponent with opts. Do have this figure at the ready. But they might not be playing many creatures. Who knows. Could still be the flash deck I guess. In which case, this figure can take out a Cutthroat or maybe a Sailor. Seamer instead. Another Aerialist to draw. Maybe trying to keep up uh, Stomp from Bone Crusher, which doesn't kill Aerialists. Or it could be a Counterspell or a Growth Spiral. I guess now it's more likely to be Teamer Reclamation. So, yeah, this could be a tough matchup if they get the Reclamation in play early. They can definitely do bigger and better things before we manage to kill them. So now we get to go Aerialists into Barons. I think that's better than playing Hushbringer, even though we've got the Troll. Not guaranteed to have land 5. And the Hushbringer being a 1-2 is also more vulnerable when it comes to Flame Sweeps and Bone Crusher Giants. Alright, so opponent had a turn 2 Spiral, but no turn 3 Reclamation at least. It may be because they only had tap lands and they're gonna play it now. Or they just don't have it. Alright. Well, Troll is still a valid play, even without Hushbringer in play. So it seems worth it. And if I get to gain life, I still grow the Aerialists. And otherwise they're taking 8. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, sweet. Troll on curve gets the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And we're missing white mana. But we only need a single white source for the sand to work out. So yeah, it's kind of tough. We do need white early. Don't get to play the Hawk on turn 1. But I do get to play Aerialist on 3. And we have access to riders, so I think we'll keep. But uh, definitely would have been an exceptional hand with white mana. Going turn 1 Hawk, turn 2 Pride Mate, turn 3 Aerialist is kind of the dream curve. Normally shouldn't have too many issues with our mana since we're playing 12 dual lands. Might actually play Hog before we play Pride Mates. So we can start growing the Aerialists right away. Of 
Red, black. Take two. And a Crusader. Alright, so this should work out. Play Aerialist attack with the Hawk. And then next turn we can play Pride Mates and Barons to grow both Aerialist and Pride Mates. And we've got the Murder Shider to answer the Regisaur if that shows up. Otherwise we can keep it to maybe kill the creature that's uh, gonna get equipped by the Amber Cleave. So I could block the Gutter Bones. Uh, not sure what they have in hand here. Could be Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant. This is not a Knight, so the Death Touch uh, Knight won't be able to target it. I probably take it, since if they do have a Stomp, I don't want to lose my Aerialists that easily. And there's a Regisaur. So now I'm probably forced to Murder Strider the Regisaur. Can wait until they discard a card first. And then... I probably save the Barons until... I have an extra Aerialist in play. So for now... We will just... Attack for four. And pass the turn. Another murder strider. So we've got some good removal. Tournament grounds the play. I could let them attack and then murder strider the Regisaur in case they do decide to Ember Cleave the Regisaur. But it also makes Embercleave one cheaper if they end up equipping something else. So I'm probably just gonna make the play that assumes that the opponent knows that the Regisaur is dying. So their Embercleave costs four instead of uh, just three. Alright. So we've got a lot of options. Could just go Aerialist and Pride Mates attack. Opponent keeping up four mana indicates that they might flash in some Paragons end of turn. I think that's a play and then next turn Barons to grow everyone essentially. So we will play these pre combats. Could also decide to hang back with the 4-5 Aerialists in case we need to make some blocks. Because of course Amber Cleave is still a pretty big threat. Yeah, I guess we'll try that. And they're just gonna stomp the Hawk, so the stomp is what they had when they attacked with the Gutter Bones into the Aerialist. And there's a Paragon. Alright. So I've got some decent blockers. Ooh, Soren is going to be huge if we can play that next turn. So ideally they don't attack me, but if they have Amber Cleave or more Paragons, they can probably get in there. It's going to be a Fervent Champion. And attack with all. Pumping Crusader. So you have the Amber Cleave Crusader. We're pretty much dead. I would have to double block Crusader and then put another creature in front of Paragon. Three, but then they just Ember Cleave the Gutter Bones and we still die. So yeah, we can beat Ember Cleave pretty much. Can we beat Stomp? We also can beat Stomp because if we take three, we still die. If we take two plus one, we also die. So we're dead to Stomp, we're dead to Ember Cleave. What can we beat? Not much. So these are kind of the obvious blocks. Not a Paragon. Alright, that's not too bad. So 
so we lose one aerialists. And another gutter bones. And a tap lands. Absolution. That's pretty massive here too. Although I would like to gain some life. Got some good ones in the graveyard. So I could go Soren, minus to get back Aerialists, place Coward Barons up to three, and then attack. If I have Solution, they're left with a 1-1 one, one Crusader. Gonna ping me down to one. I think we Soren. And maybe the place to get back Healer's Hawk, so we have a lifelinking blocker. But the extra toughness could also come in handy. So let's do this, and this. And then just attack with Aerialist to gain three. And now I've got two great blockers, and a bit of extra life to work with, and then next turn Absolution is game over. Life link is only during our turn, so it's not gonna persist throughout the opponent's turn. But they didn't have Amber Cleave or another Bone Crusher last turn. So one can hope. Alright, they do play Murder Sider, takes out Aerialists. We're not that on board here. Taking four down to one. This is a forced block, however. And they did stop deck the Embercleave. Eh, that's too bad. So playing Absolution... How would that have worked? My opponent would be left with a 1-1 Crusader. I'm at one life. I guess they wouldn't have had enough mana to Murder Strider plus Embercleave. So could have worked out a little bit better, I suppose. This play worked out better if they top deck Bone Crusher Giants, but they probably had four Amber Cleaves versus only three Bone Crusher Giants. So maybe going for the Absolution, which plays better around uh, Amber Cleave, was better. Yeah, close game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we've got a Keeper. Turn two Harshbringer, turn three Aerialists, and hopefully we can uh, start growing the Aerialists with Harshbringers and Oath of Chaos. Turn on Innkeeper definitely could be problematic. So some sort of adventure deck. And it's the red-green variety. Stomp takes out Hushbringer. Alright, so we could Aerialist first. And then wait on killing the Innkeeper until we have more of these in play so we start growing them with Oath, or we can take out Innkeeper right away. Don't like my opponent drawing extra cards, but I also want to get a bit of a board presence going. So I'll probably still run out Aerialist. Don't know if we're gonna play the second Aerialist before we Oath or after. But we'll try this for now. Ajani's a great draw. A lot of ways we can play this. Of course, having Oath in play when we play a Jani is a big deal too. So I could see Oathing the Innkeeper and then try to outsize the Giants instead of trying to necessarily race. Although I'm probably still going to attack with Aerialist since it should be more valuable than uh, the Bone Crusher Giant long term. And then if we draw land 5, we can Pride Mate plus Aerialist before we Ajani. Otherwise we could Ajani first. Another Innkeeper. And a Lovestruck Beast just to draw a card and put a 5-5 in play. And there's a Troll, but the uh, Hushbringer's gone. So probably Ajani make a token, and then if they attack Ajani, the Oath triggers. And we've got a 3-3 blocker that can trade off for the Bone Crusher Giant. And otherwise it just soaks up some damage and leaves a bigger token behind. Seems okay. Proud 
could also leave the Aerialist back. I guess that's still fine. Because Aerialist has a profitable block on the Giants if uh, they attack a Jani. And otherwise I could maybe double block the Lobstruck Beast as well. Opponent with the Great Henge is pretty strong here. And another Stomp on the token, that's unfortunate. So probably just see the Beast attack uh, a Jani now. Uh, we get to eat a Bone Crusher Giant for free at least. If they just attacked with a Lobstruck Beast, I could have maybe uh, chumped it to keep a Jani alive, which could have still been a reasonable play. Alright, so now what? Probably play Prime Maid and Aerialist first, in the hopes of finding a way to gain life. And next turn. Soren would be amazing here. Another Ajani would be quite good. Opponents playing the Teamer adventure deck from the looks of it. And a Fair Wishes as a 1 4 blocker in the air. Pretty effective. It's gonna be a 2 5 after it gets a counter. Well, they're definitely going to take over the late game with all these cards from the Innkeeper and the Henge. So it's kind of our duty to close out the game as soon as possible. Take five. Oath is great. So we can Oath taking out... Probably the Innkeeper. Get a nice big Aerialist. Could also Oath on the Fae of Wishes, so that uh, if they block my Aerialists, it dies, but my opponent probably doesn't mind. Or we could just play the Troll anyway. And then, if they let me gain life, my team grows, and if they have an 8-8 attacking, I guess they could double block, or triple block even, to take it out, but then... Um, we take out the Innkeeper anyways. And since we're probably winning in the air, the tokens probably don't matter too much. Yeah, close decision. We'll try to troll. So we do gain the life and draw the card. Hit for five. Opponent, of course, gains two per turn thanks to the Great Henge. So they've got some life to work with. Ooh, Lucky Clover. So, double Lucky Clover. I'm not gonna like this. They might have a Brazen Borrower to bounce my entire team. It's gonna be a free Beanstalk Giant, essentially. Getting three untapped lands first. Escape to the wilds, finds Stomp for next turn. And uh, three clovers means eight damage. Alright, need some uh, good top decks here. Opponent attacks for 10. Yeah, we'll probably take it. Since we probably have to kill them next turn anyway. Healer Song's not gonna cut it. I don't think there's a huge reason to Oath of Kaya the Innkeeper right now. Might as well wait. And hope that they maybe go to 3 and the Oath of Kaya can burn them out. Ooh, Murder Strider, now with that one. Let's go full control real quick since that might change my play. If I Rider the Fae Wishes, then we just have 10. Wow. Great top deck here. We're still in full control, so I get to Murder Strider before blockers. GG's. 
That was a close one. Otherwise, what would have happened? Opponents maybe chums the big aerialists, and then we only have seven damage. If they didn't uh, block the big aerialists, I guess we only would have had nine damage, which would have been a little bit short. And most likely we would have died next turn, I'm assuming, but maybe not since we could gain a bit of life and maybe make some chum blocks as well. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. This one we probably can't keep missing white mana. This is much better. And probably bottom the aerialist since we're missing double black and we've got the pride mate to kind of replace the aerialists. And then Soren should be quite good, maybe getting back pride mate or just helping it grow. Alright, not a pride mate is great. So off to good starts. Paradise Druid is fine. Ooh, even a Scarred Barons, perfect. Hit for five. Gonna have a 5-5 five, five Pride Mates and a 4-4 four, four Pride Mates. And next turn Soren can make them even bigger. As we get to deal one damage before attacking. It's gonna be a shifting Ceratops. Alright, not too effective here. I guess it could gain reach to eventually block the healer's hawk, but not right now. And I don't think we need to trade a Pride Mates for the Ceratops, even though we could. Alright, 7-7 seven, seven on defense. And yeah, opponent has to pack it in, just too good of a start. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see the uh, Black-White Lifebringer deck in action. Definitely still the best draws you can have involve Pride Mates and Aerialists and a bunch of life gain effects. Hushbringer plus Troll is a nice combo, of course, but the deck can easily win without it. So it just happens that those cards also synergize well with the rest of the deck. So if we draw Hushbringer without the Troll or the Troll without the Hushbringer, the deck is still functional. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.